In this video, we're going to have a look at this tab content. The content is dynamic, and at the moment, you'll see that the content that I'm using in these tabs is coming from the posts. So the same content in the posts are now pulling through as this tab content. So the nice thing is, is that if you have an FAQ section, you might want to set up a category in your posts, which are for FAQ, or you might create a custom post type, and you want to use that for your FAQ section or an information section, whatever you want to do, but just pull through the dynamic content. And then, of course, the tabs on the left hand side can be styled in different ways to make it more interesting on the screen. And we'll have a look at a few of those options and how to style them. So, this is basically what we're going to have a look at creating. To get started, then I'm going to head over here into Bricks. And the first thing I'm going to do then is add a new section. So we'll add and select the section, and then I'm just going to pull the section up from all the way at the bottom, all the way to the top. And then we're going to create our new section in this top area, right? First thing we need to do then is open up the section, head over to the container. And now we're going to add, look for the slide, slider. No, not slider. We're going to look for the tabs. And we're going to look for tabs nestable. And we're going to insert those at the top of the container. So right now at the top in the container, you will see the tabs and you'll see that we have a tab menu and we have a tab content area. If you open those up, you'll see that a div for each pane. And that is because if we're going to add um, content individually, then for every div, which is your tab menu, you would need a content element. But because we're going dynamic, we will only need one div and one pane. So let's delete the additional pane. Right, so now we're ready to start um, checking out the content. So in the content here at the moment, you'll see in the pane we have rich text and in the div for the tab menu we have some basic text. Now we're going to be using dynamic content. So I know that in terms of the content, instead of rich in that rich text element, instead of content goes here, I'd like to put in the post content. So we're going to hit on the lightning bolt, head over to post and scroll down to post content. So the post content will go in here. And then in the tab menu, we want the post title. So we'll replace title one. Once again, we'll go for the dynamic data and we're just going to choose the post title. Right. So those two elements are done. Next, we have to tell it what post title we want displayed. To do that, we just go up one level to the div and we're going to activate the query loop. And I'm not going to change anything in the query. I'm going to leave it exactly as is the standard query loop. The same thing is then applicable for the pane. So if we select whatever we select in the div for the title must correspond with what we select for the pane. So in the pane as well, I'm going to activate the post loop and in the query, I'm not going to make any adjustments. So we leave it standard as is. So that was the, the content and we did the same in the div for the title. And you can already see the contents being pulled through. So we're going to save that. And then once that's saved, we're going to head over to the website and see how that's pulling through. Now, you can already see from the nature of the content and the size that maybe having the content across the top is not going to work. Um, also, you'll notice how the page gets pushed um, up and down depending on the content. So it might work in some areas, but it wouldn't work uh, where you perhaps have content maybe below your tabs. Alternatively, you can set a standard height for the tabs. But in this case, what we're going to do now is move these tabs from the default position to down the left hand side. To do that, we head over back to the tab section. And so what we want to do is just understand how the layout works. So one of the easiest ways of doing that is just to close up the different um, sections here. And let's just close up everything then. Right, so here we have the tabs nestable. And in the tabs nestable, you'll see we have the tabs menu and we have the tab content. So if we want to change the layout, the first thing we'd need to do then is have a look at the tabs nestable content options. And if you click on content for tabs nestable, you'll see that there's a direction 
for us already and we can then just select the direction that we want so in this case we want to select row because we want the two next to each other and that's great what we then need to do is get the menu items in a different layout so when you click on the tabs menu you will see that it's automatically in the horizontal row and we're going to change that direction then to the vertical column and there we've changed it nicely into the vertical column and now we have the tabs down the left and the content on the right this column is a little bit wide though so head over to style layout and let's um, target say 40 percent and that will give us the content uh, the tabs down the left and the content on the right so let's save that and then once that's saved let's go across to the website and have a look and see how that translates so website loaded and you can see now that everything's working that's really great and now it's a case of just styling it the way that we want so let's have a look and see what options are available so when we're looking at the options let's start then at the top with the tabs nestable so let's go to the origin of the content and you'll see that we um, under content then we do have some options available to us here and let's have a look and see what we have so under content then we have an option for some padding which is great and then we also have the option to add a border and change the text color and the background color so that's great and then if we have a look at the title you'll see here we have um, a couple of options for title so we have margin padding um, background and then here you'll see that we also have a section here for active so that would be the active item that you see over there so that gray background would be this background color so if we wanted to replicate something like this where we had the tabs highlighted down the left and the content wrapped in a border then this is the way that we would do that so we'll start with the content because that has the least amount of work and you'll see we already have some padding in this section which is great the next thing that we'll need to do then is just adjust the border so let's scroll down to that border section and give it a nice broad border apply that to all the sides keep it solid and then we'll give it a color so let's go with the turquoise greenish color and then if we want to give the border radius then simply add the radius as normal so there we have the radius added to our content and that's looking great the next thing that we'll want to do is start working on these tabs so maybe what we want to do then as we had the green there is change the title of the active to match the border color so here we have the background color and I'm going to select that and now the border uh, color is the turquoise and then we also want to change the typography so to change the typography and there we're going to change the color and maybe we'll just make it white completely white so there we have the white right so that done now what you'll notice is that you might want this div to be all the way across because at the moment it just looks a bit odd because it resizes according to the content so to do that i'm actually going to head over to the div um, and then we'll change that width of that div to a hundred percent right so there we have that div over to 100 percent so let's save that and let's have a look and see what we have on the website then so website refreshing and there you can see that we have the div and because it's uh, or we have these tabs and because that div is 100 percent wide now for the title it does touch onto the um, area of the content which is great so it looks like it's tabbed um, however there's a bit of a funny space at the top and then at the bottom as well it doesn't quite match up to change that let's get back to the um, tabs um, nestable main menu and you'll see that we have a spacing option here and let's have a look at what we can get here so if I change the margin 
to 20 at the top and 20 at the bottom you'll see it that changes it outside of that area so we'll leave that then we have a look at the tab menu which is this column down the left hand side and in the content there's nothing special there so we'll go over to style and the margin there we'll make that 20 at the top and we'll make that 20 at the bottom so now you can see that our tabs are fitting nicely against the side of the straight line now if we as in the bottom one wanted to curve those corners um, to do that we go back to the tabs nestable go back to content go back to title and now we'll go to the border and we'll look at just giving the border radius but the radius we only need to apply to the top and the left so now we have the radius applied to the top and the left and we'll save that and now let's head over and see what we have so just saving that section now so with that saved let's see the page should refresh and now right so now we have our tabs down the left hand side and you can see that they are fitting nicely then against the edge as we go down the page so that's then how uh, we're able to create the same layout if you wanted the tabs to be completely independent and not touch the side we can do that as well so we'll head back and we're going to then uh, we're not going to be looking at the title section or the content section what we'll do then is we'll go to the tabs menu which is this column and we'll go over to style and then in the layout we'll add some padding so maybe there we'll add um, 20 on the left and 20 on the right it's going to look a bit odd now with our uh, borders not being complete so to get the borders of the title we head back to the tabs nestable uh, we then go to the content section we look for title and now we want to go to the active section to the um, active borders so we're in the title and we're in active and we're in the borders and now what we want to do is change the radius to 10 all round so there we have the border set to 10 all round and save that and now when we have a look you'll see that the tab is now separated uh, from the edge and it's nicely rounded off just waiting for that to finish saving uh, that has saved let's refresh so now we have our tab separate to the content on the right hand side the other thing uh, maybe what we would like to do then is uh, maybe we'd like to maybe have a background for the tabs that are not active so let's go and have a look and see how we can achieve that so here we have a background option and let's change that background option and what we'll do is we'll just make that a light gray so we've made it a light gray and you'll see that previously when we changed the radius we did it um, on the inactive item so you can see that you can have different border radiuses for active and inactive uh, so to just show you for that border previously we changed the border radius there in this case though we're not going to have a border radius and you'll see that the items were touching each other so if we don't want the items to touch each other we can then introduce a margin so let's then include a margin here and we'll just include it at the top and the bottom so now you can have your individual items something like that or if you also want to wrap them in a border we can and if we then set the border at this level you'll see that we've now applied what what that would then allow us to do then is we can head over then 
and we can actually remove that border setting on the active item and it will then it should just inherit let's have a look take the not yeah so now we only so whatever we set at the inactive level is inherited by the active level and then whatever we do on the active then overrides the inactive so we'll save that again uh, still busy saving here and then we'll refresh so we're just busy waiting for that to save not sure why it's taking this long right it's saved refreshing and now you can see we have this nice tab content um, down the left hand side of our website and dynamically pulling in um, from the posts of course then you are able to go into the, those loops but remember that whatever you change must be changed in the other one too and the div is where we set the query so if I'm in here, um, that's how I've done it in this case. So if we have a look at the tabs nestable and we work, yeah, so there the, the aren't many options when it comes to where to set the post loop. So the tabs menu does allow for a query loop, as does the div, but there, there isn't an option then to globally set a query loop so we can't in tabs nestable create that query loop we can only create the query loop in the div or the pane and i've opted for the div um, that is what worked for me uh, if we then change the query we would need to change so it wouldn't matter so much um, if we just changed it for the title and we said right only give us three posts and we save that and we go over to the um, website then you'll see that we then only have the three items um, you'll also see now it does jump because of the fact that um, the content is different height so we would need to see how we can set that so if we have a look at the tabs nestable in which the two elements are contained um, we have a direction which is the horizontal row and under layout um, we could try the align or the let's see if that would make any difference if we applied those options in the styling I'm not sure that it would though because yeah it's kind of dynamic content so maybe the best way is to set a fixed height then for your content element and the reason it's doing this is is because the number of tabs is less than the content if the number of tabs exceeded the content all the time then of course that wouldn't be an issue so the content then will take its cue from whatever tabs are available so the number of tabs then is determined by what you set in the query on your tab menu um, on the div inside the tab menu so if we take it back to eight then we'll go back to eight right well that's pretty much then how to create a dynamic set of tabs and then how to style them um, yeah and then you can pretty much then either use the standard post choose a category or create a custom post type for the content well, I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for watching.